Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and implemented a little bit more of our binding adapter here to implement a function called load with Picasso, which basically just gives a little bit more functionality to our image view UI element. And uh, we did so via the data binding instance and library. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out in the top right. I'll link a card in the description. Um, and in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and make use of our URL variable here inside of our newsfeed item. At the moment, we have a nicely scrolling list here, dynamically loaded images, all this hooked up from Firebase. If you've been following the series, you know what's going on. Uh, but if we click on each tile here, nothing actually happens. Uh, so we can go ahead and change that. And inside of our newsfeed item here, the model that is fueling each individual cell, we do have a URL field. It is a string and it is basically the link to the article here that I found online, wherever I found these. Um, so this is the World Health Organization, this one is WebMD, etc. Um, and so I think this will be a good opportunity to showcase the web view UI element. So at the moment we have, uh, like I said, a scrolling list and it's all in one screen. In order to show a web view, we're going to have to go ahead and basically create a new activity here, uh, a new screen that when we click one of these elements, we end up navigating to it. So let me go ahead and just get some of that boilerplate out of the way. Okay, so welcome back everybody. Simply just created a new activity here called Detail Activity. Um, and then we've created a layout file here with the activity underscore detail name. Again, we have layout as our root uh, element here so that we can make use of the data binding library. And so we'll actually go ahead and put in a variable here that is called, um, we'll just call it URL. And then the type is going to be string and then uh, we're ready to go. So as we can see here in the layout file, the one thing that we have here is a web view. We've told it match match and we've given it all the constraints unnecessary, but I just like to do it. Then we have an ID here of web view. So if we take a look at how we can actually make use of this, we can reference our binding dot web view dot load URL. And inside here, we can actually uh, load something up here. So let's just say, HTTPS, google.com here. Um, I don't know if it needs the www, but uh, let's just be verbose and give it a whirl here. So I don't know why I ran it. There's no way to get to this activity at the moment, and we are missing another crucial piece of information, but essentially this is uh, all that we need to do. And because, as I mentioned, the newsfeed item has this URL string here, we can very easily pass that along into this activity, and then we can go ahead and load it into here. So if we go ahead and say, uh, create a variable here, val URL equals our intent dot get string extra. Let's call this, uh, well, let's actually do it a little bit better here. Let's make a companion object and let's create a const val argument underscore URL. And then we will just set it to whatever we want here. And then we will fetch that. Uh, via uh, from the intent and then otherwise I think we can just default to nothing here um, and then we simply just load this URL here right so the idea here is that when the activity starts up we do our stuff with the binding go ahead and this is the data binding util to simultaneously get or set our content view because it's an activity and then return that view binding or data binding instance in this variable so we can make use of it here uh, then we fetch our URL here from our intent, getting the string extra, we're going to make this our little key because we're going to reference this key when we're creating the bundle and creating the intent. And then we simply just say web view load that URL that we have. So the detail activity is basically done. Uh, it is a pretty simple implementation. So we'll leave it at that for now. Um, sorry, I think my computer's taking a little while here. Uh, but now we basically need to, inside of the newsfeed activity, we have our recycler view. The adapter here is the newsfeed adapter. And inside here, we create our view holders and we actually, um, you know, set everything onto the screen here. So one other thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say listener, and then we're going to say uh, on click here and we're going to pass in the news feed item dot URL 
And now the onClick is going to be a parameter that needs to exist inside here, which is just going to be a function declaration that returns nothing but accepts a string as input here. So this second variable here named on click is of type uh, function basically, and then it accepts a string. If you had to have a function that accepted multiple strings, you could do string string, and then if it needed an int, you know, whatever. Uh, but we just have basically one, a simple way to provide a callback, and then it returns unit, which is, uh, you know, uh, nothing in, in, in a sense from Kotlin here. So now inside of our on bind view holder, we need to add in this little lambda here at the end, which is going to be the URL right here. And then we're just simply going to have to uh, invoke uh, an, an interface here for our newsfeed item. So I'm actually inside of this class going to create an interface called newsfeed item interface. It's possible that we're going to want to do a few more things. And inside of the interface, we're going to declare a function that says on, let's be verbose here, on newsfeed item clicked, it's going to take a URL, which is of type string. Um, and then we're going to basically have a weak reference to this inside of our constructor to the recycler view. And we can do so by declaring it here. So inside of the constructor, we're declaring a private variable named callback weak reference. It is of type weak reference of type newsfeed item interface. And this is basically a way for the adapter to transition events or, or provide callbacks to whoever cares about this. In our case, it's going to be the activity, but outside of our adapter, because we don't want to be doing any kind of navigation from within our on bind view holder or from within our view holder or something like that. We don't want to do that. That's not good practice. We basically want to bubble up all of these events here that could happen uh, inside of our view holder here. We want to bubble them all up to basically the parent of the view holder, which is going to eventually be the activity. Uh, then there is a more proper location to do certain things like navigate, which we are about to do. So we can go ahead and say callback we reference dot get. That is a nullable operation. And then we can pass in the URL to the function here that we want to call. So this is an interesting concept. I just want to talk about it for a minute here. You might ask, why are we doing a weak reference? Well, uh, a weak reference allows basically garbage collection to happen even if the reference still exists. So it's not going to prevent, a better way to put it is it's not going to prevent garbage collection from happening. Um, and that's important from just you know a, a memory leak perspective, uh, especially if you were to bubble up this uh, weak reference here, or sorry, this callback all the way to the view holder, you could end up with a view holder holding a reference to your callback, which in this case would be the activity. And then if we wanted to, you know, move on or, or uh, destroy the activity, the garbage collection might not work properly because something else is holding on to it. So it's an interesting concept. It might be a little bit advanced here, but just know the weak reference is going to help prevent any kind of memory leaks. But more importantly here, it's the concept of this adapter has an understanding of the interface that wants the communication, but the view holder doesn't, right? The view holder itself takes nothing but the parent. We could stuff the callback inside of the constructor here, but instead we put it in the onBind function and it's simply just a reference to uh, a, a function. And in this case, it's a Lambda function that we call on click here. And we invoke that when the user clicks the actual card on screen. Then it is up to the parent location of the code here inside of the adapter to actually make use of this Lambda to understand, oh, okay, this means or this callback here means that the uh, user clicked on the particular item and so therefore we're going to send the URL back up to whoever cares about it. By the way, we don't know who cares about it, but that's not our job as the adapter. Um, and instead it'll make its way all the way up to the uh, activity here. Now we're going to see an issue uh, in the constructor here, but we're going to create here the weak reference to this. And the reason that we're going to say this is because the activity is now going to implement the interface here that's defined inside the adapter. On Mac, you can click Control I and it will bring up this little implement members dialog. I don't know what it is on Windows. It might just be, I don't know what it would be on Windows, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, you can go ahead and click enter and that will basically allow you to, uh, you know, multi-select functions from that dialog if there were that we needed to implement and, and move on from there. 
So from here, it's quite simple. We're just going to go ahead and create our intent. It's probably one of the first things that we've uh, ever done inside of Android navigation. Specifically here, we are going to reference the class that we want to be moving to, which is the detail activity. Then inside of our intent here, let's make it a little Kotlinified. We will call dot apply on that, and we will say, oh, it's just called put extra. Excuse me, sorry, it's been a long time since I've done this. Um, we're going to make sh make use of the key here. So we have inside of our detail activity the arg URL, and then we're going to put in the URL here, and then we are just going to say start activity, passing in our intent that we've just created. All right? So this is pretty straightforward. To find the intent, tell it where we want to go. We call apply so that in this block we're basically an instance of the intent and we can just call the function here. We don't have to say intent dot put extra. We can just call put extra here. And basically after this initialization runs, the intent is ready to go. It's ready to be used. And so we do make use of it here in the start activity function. And the last thing that we need here that I almost forgot is inside of our Android manifest here, we need to define the secondary activity here. Um, the detail activity, there it is, it's smart enough to know where it is, and that's about it, right? When you create a new activity, you must uh, add it to your manifest so that the uh, app knows how to function. This will also prevent runtime errors. Uh, and then I'm going to assume we're going to need a particular permission here. I'm not entirely certain of this, but it make, feels like it makes sense. Um, in order to load the web view, I'm going to guess that we need the internet permission. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and load that in right now. Might have to reinstall the application uh, on our emulator for things to work properly, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. And so here we are launching our activity, coming into the foreground. You should see our uh, list here that we do. And then if we go ahead and click on a particular item here, we'll see if my emulator stops uh, lagging here. You'll actually see there's like a ripple effect. You can kind of see it a little bit more there. That is the material, uh, you know, elements just doing their thing, which is just nice to have out of the box because we set the on-click listener. And then if we go ahead and click one of these elements here, we see a little bit of a delay here. We actually have our additional activity come into the foreground there. We can see that now we are basically looking at a website within the application here. And if we were to take a look at the actual URL that we're looking at here, um, it would be this website here. And that's about it. So the web view is pretty simple here. We are missing the back arrow here in the activity. However, if we do gesture backwards, yeah, uh, emulator's running a little funky, a little slow, but we can see that we went ahead uh, and navigated backwards to where we were. If we go ahead and let's just click on another one to make sure that this is working properly. And I do apologize for this little stutter and slowness here, but we can see here, this is now a different article with a WebMD. You can see where I got the image from, um, and then you can read up on it here as we would expect. And so that's the bulk of the episode, folks. Thanks for watching. I will uh, clean up a few things here, but before I do, if you have learned something here, if this did help you out, help you understand web views or uh, just something you didn't understand before, please give a like, thumbs up on the video. It'll help me push the content out to more people that need it. And consider subscribing if you are not subscribed and you have been uh, either watching the channel for a little bit or you, um, you know, this is your first episode. We'd really appreciate it. We are pushing towards that 1,000 goal. Can't believe that I am even saying that, but uh, we are getting up there. So I really appreciate all the support so far. Would love to hear your thoughts on the series and my, uh, you know, video style and all that kind of stuff here. Let, let me know if it's helpful in the comments. Um, and then as I mentioned here, we are just going to clean some of this stuff up. So we don't have a little back arrow here, which uh, we can we can go ahead and change really quickly. But as I mentioned, we navigate backwards. It works fine. Um, but also we're not really making use of the data binding like we have been elsewhere, right? So we have the URL here. Uh, it is a string, but we're not really doing anything inside of the data binding activity. So instead of actually telling the web view here to load the URL, we can just say binding.url equals URL. That's going to go ahead and set basically set this variable that exists inside this layout file, which is a little odd uh, if you are not used to data binding, but that is how it works. Um, and then we are going to need to make use of that inside of this uh, XML file here. So if we go ahead and just declare, let's say, 
load URL into web view and then we are going to make use of I believe it's the at symbol right uh, the URL there and this is basically how we reference a particular variable that's defined here but if you haven't been watching the series you might be like well, what the hell is this this doesn't make any sense this is not a, a base functionality and you are correct in that so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that we're gonna open up our binding adapters uh, nope sorry okay I don't like how that menu keeps flickering. Our binding adapters.kt file. We can see we have the recycler view, the image view, and now we're going to create another region here for the web view. Duplicate that, call end region here, and then we are going to just do exactly what we've done before here. So we're going to copy and paste that exact same, all right, we'll give it the capital V because it wants. Um, we need to make sure that we paste that there because it needs to match exactly. Uh, but basically, if we put this string inside of these parentheses here, we're going to add a little bit of functionality into our particular view that we are going to, or, or that we're making use of that, uh, this function on basically. So we can say it's going to accept a web view here. Sorry about that. And then it will also take the URL which is going to be a string and then we are very simply just going to call it webview.load and the URL that we've passed in there. So now everything kind of highlights properly and we understand that we are making use of this function here so we very easily just set the URL in there uh, inside of our binding here and then we're just calling this very interesting function here uh, on the web view which doesn't necessarily exist otherwise uh, if we didn't have uh, you know that that little additional functionality that we built out point is is that when we set the variable here this web view is going to react it's basically going to call this function here passing in the url and that's going to you know we just wrote it that's going to tell the web view to load that url and so we are coming back here uh, into the foreground we have our stuff loading up here uh, and then if we were to click on a particular item we should see that second activity come into the screen, which we do, and we see our image, uh, or sorry, not our image, our, our article loading into the web view here. Um, and if we look at the surface now, you know, we're not specifically loading it in or, or like as explicitly, right? We're just setting the URL here. Um, I think we could possibly even just truncate this a tiny bit and make it a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more efficient. And that's about it. So otherwise we don't have the arrow here and we can go ahead and quickly clean that up. All right, folks, and now we have this little back arrow. Uh, if you see this activity behind me here, nothing has actually changed. And that's because I stumbled across a different way of doing it that honestly I haven't thought of in a few years, but I actually think it's a little bit better than changing things programmatically here. Um, so as you can see here, there's absolutely nothing that we've changed, but there is the back arrow. If we hit the back button, it does navigate us accordingly. And if we were to actually try to go back again, the application would shut down. So it actually keeps track of our back stack quite well. And as I mentioned, there's nothing here. So you might be wondering how that's being done. Inside of the manifest here, when you're dealing with activities, you can actually define this variable or, or this flag, this, this information here inside of the declaration for the activity. That's called parent activity name, and you basically point it to a specific activity. And I think they added this into Android a couple years ago, but the benefit of doing things this way is that if you ever end up implementing deep linking, the, uh, the application understands that there's a parent activity that needs to be created for this activity to exist. So if you were to deep link the user somehow straight into our, our detail activity here, it would understand that in order for that to happen, it would actually need uh, the, the newsfeed activity in the back stack as well, so that when the user goes backwards, there's another activity behind the screen here, and there is some information already you know, being displayed to the user. It'll provide a seamless experience for the user as far as deep linking into the app, and they feel like they are in the correct location, and then when they back up, they notice they're in the same spot they would normally be in. So it's just a good UX thing um, and, and it's just, you know, puts that little bit of polish on your application if you can provide it. Now, unfortunately, in order to deep link in, you're going to have to make sure that the intent get string extra here is set properly for the URL so that there's actually something to load. 
uh, and that is a discussion for a different topic here. I don't think we are going to be implementing that right now. But point is, we don't need to change the code here. We don't need to set home as up enabled or whatever it's called um, and override the, the on click of this uh, particular uh, element there. So it's just another way to do it uh, and it functions exactly as you would expect here. So um, that, is just, uh, that is just wonderful. But that will do it for me folks today. Uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Again, if you made it this far, please give a like, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.